talking about, it's hard to get this information. We're just so used to, like, we just, it's in our brains, so we know it. Yeah. We that, like, this kid fucking with that how to make it a beat for one year and 17, and they start to learn how to put up beats on YouTube or whatever. It's like, wow, this is amazing. So you download an FL Studio, you're, you're ready, you're seeing that people make, when you learn and when you do. And I feel like a lot of, like, because I know it, man, I get DMs every week. So, like, I don't think, dude, I ask for advice. Like, if you yeah. get an answer to something, the next time you get a prop. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the video. It is currently Monday when I'm recording this. I think this will go up on Tuesday, probably. But, uh, we got something a little bit different today. As you guys know, I've only been doing this for about four months. And, uh, I found this guy who was posting beats on Instagram. But I asked him, like, how long he's been producing. He said one month. So, uh, I followed him. He followed me back. Uh, been going back and forth a little bit. And I asked, I reached out to him and said, hey, would you mind if I get an FLP? Do, like, a collaboration type of deal. And, uh sort of like a fix my beat type of thing I you guys are gonna find out I've actually already looked at it and although my beats have improved dramatically in the past four months compared to when I first started I still don't like I can hear when things are off but I can't really be like that's it that's that's the one that's wrong that needs to be fixed so I, I don't really know how it's gonna go I could even make this worse all right so bear with me this is just an experiment for when a four month producer tries to fix a one month producer's beat. So we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, so before we get into this, uh, I just wanna say that it, I don't, it's kinda hard to do these uh, fix my beat type of stuff because generally I just end up going through the entire song and then making it sound completely different to the points where you can't even recognize that it's the same track. So I'm gonna do my best to not do that. I know the kind of feel that he's trying to go for and uh, it's different because it's not the type that I usually make. You know, this is like the really like hard, gritty type of trap. Where I usually try to make the, the soft, emotional type of stuff. So uh, it's it's different than what I usually do. Hopefully this won't be too bad. <laughs> Alright, so for, for your guys' ears, I did lower down the the volume, the, the master volume real quick. Because, uh, well, let's go and find, find out. Let's go and see how it sounds without me touching anything. I don't know why the instrument does that. It just cuts out sometimes. Maybe it's because it's in trial mode. I don't know. And hi hats. Okay, so that's going to be it without me touching anything. And honestly, the main gripe that I had with this track, uh, like the beat's actually pretty dope. The mixing is the main thing that I'm going to be doing. So I don't want to rearrange everything too much. You know, I could just put it into complete simulation format and then just make it sound completely different, but I don't want to do that too much. Another big challenge is that the, like the, uh, how he laid everything out is way different from what I do. You know, I usually put all my instruments one to five depending on how many instruments I have, leave an empty track, and then all my drums, and then all my effects, but, so I'm kind of just scouring to see what I can find. Oh, that's not good. Um, you never want to start a track, or even mix a track, with the, with the, start it with it on. So I'm going to delete it for now. We're going to change that to samples as well. There's a couple of th in things in here that I don't have, so we're just going to go grab some of the sounds that I do have. And he's using some stock, like the stock kick, stock 808. Stock 808 is absolute garbo. And as much as I hate to say it, one part in improving your beats is going to have having better sounds. As much as you want to be a better producer before you do that. But getting to a certain point, you're going to need some better sounds. Definitely a different clap. So you never really want to make completely get rid of all of the... 
like a, all of a certain frequency. You know, you want to limit it to a point to where it sounds better without getting rid of too much. So we're actually gonna put that deck down to default. I want some of the clickiness out a little bit. All right, and that already sounds a lot more pleasing to the ear. If you have too much high end, it's gonna sound like you're like attacking your listener. All right, different 808 as well. I think you might want like a grimy type of bait away here. Right, where is that? This one, okay, it's slightly too loud. I wanna take out those hi-hats, only because if you have hi-hats going on throughout your entire track, it's going, and I made this mistake up until very recently. Uh, hi hats are used as a drop, as a uh, hi hats are used as like a drop instrument, I guess. So when you have hi hats constantly going through, you're gonna get rid of uh, your drops aren't gonna have aren't gonna hit as hard. So I think even over here, yeah, we're actually gonna get rid of all of those all the way up until there. We can try and add keep the hi hats in a different pattern. See, if you want, I don't know if your goal was to have this be a complete hard drop. If that is what you're going for, then having the 808s come in a little bit early is not going to be a good idea. Because the, the two main things that are going to make a drop drop and hit harder are going to be uh, the hi-hats and the, and the 808s. Uh, so if you wanted them to hit harder, then just get rid of these two. And then also use not as many kicks. Yeah, one or two, a bar would be fine. And then that's going to make it hit a lot harder. But I'm just going to assume that you want a kind of more like a mellow transition, right? So I'm going to leave them in there for now. If you wanted that harder drop, just get rid of the 808s. Not as many kicks and then leave everything else in here the same. See how there's just like, it's a transition. There was no drop. Even for these hi-hats, like they're, I know you wanted to try and go for like a more in-your-face type of beat, but these hi-hats are kind of all over the place. You want to have some sort of rhythm with them. And again, that just might be not my style. You know, that could be what people are looking for and what this track needs, but I just, me personally, I don't like doing these crazy hi-hat rolls and everything. Like you want to have like a hi-hat roll maybe every four bars. I'm just gonna get rid of those two hi-hats there. And then you go back into the crazy drop. I'm gonna get rid of that probably. Yep, hit much harder. And yeah, I see that you have different uh, different patterns for your hi-hats, but because it's so wild and all over the place, you can't even tell there's a change happening. Then maybe do some automation. And just put down... Another thing as well, uh, for these, if you have, if your patterns are always looping and you don't, and they always like, it sounds like there's something more coming after, watch, listen to the, 
end of this, it sounds like there should be more coming after it. And then there's just nothing. So, one thing you can you can do is go to the whatever is, is ending it. I think the hi hats should be fine, but we're gonna make these two things unique. We're not gonna have that roll at the end. We're just gonna leave it empty. And we're just gonna go and ride it out. Now hear how it just smoothly goes into the, the outro. Even the hi-hats are a little bit, like, it's just, they want you, they leave you wanting more and not in a good sort of sense, but it's not that big of a deal. Honestly, because I don't want it to change this too much and I want it to still be your vision and not just completely reconstructed by me, I just wanted to fix it a little bit. Uh, I think that might be it. I might, I'm going to go in and do some more mixing, but other than that, I think that's it. All right. I'm going to go into EQ all this stuff and do the volumes correctly, and uh, I'll see you guys when it's done. Okay, so I've gone through everything with the uh, with the mixing and did the volumes correctly. I did the separation for the left to right for the panning. Yeah, I did a couple other changes, but nothing too major, and then I did a little bit of mastering, not too much. Put the limiter back on. You know, like the, li the limiter you should never start with, but you could always use it at the end to make the track louder the right way, as well as Maximus. Similar, but I feel like you get more out of it with Maximus than the limiter. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Let's see how it sounds now. So that is going to be it for this video. Uh, honestly, <laughs> let me know if I made this better or worse. Uh, I tried not to change too much. You know, I could have gone in so many different directions, but I wanted to keep this as his vision. And uh, honestly, the beat was not that bad in the first place. It just needed a, a few major tweaks. All right, but let me know what you guys think. Put it down in the comments and I'll try and get back to them. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Peace.